Welcome everyone. We are gonna be doing a gentle restorative flow today. I thought I would start off with movement that will build strength. And then we're going to move into some relaxation poses in the latter half of the class. So over the weekend, I didn't mention this yesterday because it was the uh, lunar calendar beginning. We were celebrating the Chinese New Year, the year of the water rabbit. But over the weekend, um, you know, I've got two teenagers at home now and um, I'll go ahead and say, <laughs> I had a, an issue come up with my son, um, expectantly, you know, because he's the age where things are going to start happening. Um, and I'm going to be finding some things out that maybe he wouldn't want me to know. And that's kind of what happened over the weekend. He's been pulling away a little bit more, but he's got a girlfriend now and he's, you know, got a friends group now, and, but he's been spending more time in his room behind closed doors. He's been on his phone more. He's been out more. And honestly, I've been missing him because we're so close and being a single mom for 10 years and having all that quality time, you know, I've been telling him lately, I'm like, dude, like I miss you. Let's hang out. Let's, you know, have game night. Let's create something together. And I don't know, he's still a great kid and he's a a good person and we still have our you know moments where we really do connect but we were having a deep conversation I don't know a couple months ago and um, I realized he was wanting to share with me but he wasn't sharing with me and so over the weekend I really tried to bring in this conversation and open up like a safe space for him to to talk to me and I told him, like, I know you're withholding some things and I, you know, I want you to be able to, to tell me what's happening. And uh, basically, I found out some things that um, required a lot more conversation, <laughs> as you can imagine. And uh, my theme for today is basically on strength and fortitude, because I have really tried as a parent to bring yoga and yoga philosophy into my parenting so that my parenting is coming from a really conscientious space. I didn't want to just do everything my parents did because there were some, you know, we can always look at our parents and say, oh, they did this great. And oh, they did this the wrong way. And um, I guess what I was trying to avoid was making the same mistakes and making the mistakes that my parents made with me that made me really want to, you know, rebel. Um, so I've made this conscious effort to, you know, really think about how I'm talking to him and how I'm presenting things. And, and so I had to step away, you know, when I discovered these things, because I like, I needed to breathe. <laughs> I needed to pause my actions and my emotions so that my emotions weren't taking over so that I wouldn't be reactive or yell or, you know, go off the handle. So I took the time that I needed. I made him take the time that he needed so that we could come back and, and really, you know, discuss things in a calm, clear way. And man, it's been so helpful, I think, for both of us. Uh, to come back together in this calm demeanor. So basically this theme today is about strength and fortitude. Yes, we're gonna be doing poses that build physical strength. We're gonna do weight bearing poses that can not only strengthen our bone density, but will strengthen our muscular um, definition. But when we talk about fortitude, fortitude means the strength of mind. It's the strength of mind that gives you the courage in adversity. It's the strength of mind that gives you the courage to have difficult conversation, um, to embrace change that you don't want to happen. It takes fortitude to have the courage to even face pain, you know, that you may be experiencing either emotionally or spiritually or even physically. 
So that's our theme today. Let's build some strength in fortitude. So even though fortitude is the strength of mind, we can strengthen our mind through focus, through determination, and being in the state of yoga. So let's do that. So grab your props and I'll meet you on the mat. We're actually gonna start off on the belly. So we're gonna come to a passive crocodile, which is where we're on the belly, spreading the feet wide apart. We're gonna cross the arms in front of the chest. And then we're gonna rest the head on top. This way you're providing a tunnel under the arms and face so that you can comfortably breathe. And the first thing I want you to notice is if you feel tension in your low back. And regardless if you do or don't, just rock your hips. Rocking side to side. And then return to stillness. Hopefully that helps. But then I want you to observe how have you landed your feet? And you don't need to correct anything. I'm just curious. Are your toes tucked or untucked? Are the toes angled inward or outward? And this will give you a little information regarding your own anatomy and the habits that you built up in your body through your lifetime. Again, we're not correcting anything. Just notice. Then begin to breathe slowly and deeply. Noticing the movement at your core. The deep diaphragmatic breathing as well as resting here on the belly or providing benefits to the digestive system. Now, let's go ahead and inhale. Walk or slide the feet closer together and lengthen through your leg bones. Pick the head up, prop onto your forearms for six. Look down and make sure that your elbows are not being away. If they are, just crawl them underneath the inside of the shoulder bone. Hands parallel to one another. And I want you to create a little tiger grip with your fingertips. So as you grip the floor with your hands, you're driving the heart forward towards your thumbs and then push through the elbows to lift through the sternum, the sides of your neck and the crown of your head. So notice we're pulling with the arm firming the foundation for the arms and creating more strength. Notice how the triceps, the back of the arms fire up, the shoulders, the back. Keep your legs lengthening, your feet pressing down, feel the knees lift, feel the glutes squeeze, and maybe even draw the navel in towards the spine so that you're getting and building more strength in different muscle groups. Couple more breaths. 
All right, casually let a little bit of that go through the lower body and upper body. Gaze over the left shoulder, slide your left knee up, flip to the inside of your left foot. So now you're in this hybrid position, half broad leg and sphinx. Now, don't feel like you have to continue to grip your fingers and activate your upper body like you just did. You can provide just enough to stay supported. All right, so we're gonna sail the left leg back and now we'll glide the right knee up, flipping to the inside of that foot. Continuing to keep the chest propped up. Maybe looking straight ahead, unless you need to angle the head to look down, dependent on your neck. So notice, even though we're not putting the muscular work as much into the upper body, feel the bone stacking and it's supporting your weight. It's keeping you elevated. So it's strengthening those bones. All right, now let's glide the right leg back and we're gonna make a fist and hide the thumb that represents the ego. Now apply pressure down through the forearms, curl the toes under, lift your knees, thighs and hips, forearm plank. Straight through the quads. Strengthen the core, strengthen the upper back, strengthen the shoulders and arms, and then exhale, sink back down. All right, now slide your hands under the shoulders and then push up to tabletop position. From tabletop, you're gonna lower back to the forearms. Again, lining up the arms so they're parallel, upper arm bones perpendicular to the floor, and your belly may automatically be sinking like mine is, and that's okay because we're actually going to move to cow tilt. So jut your six bones up and look out, and as you exhale, round it out to calf stretch. Inhale to cow. Exhale to cat. Again, inhale to cow. Exhale to cat. All right, from here, keep your forearms down, but squeeze your hands and lace your fingers. And then start to plug the abdomen in. So you're getting a little cat stretch back, not anything extreme. And you're gonna curl the toes under and you're gonna lift up to this form of dolphin pose. Hands together, arms rooting, head hovering, pushing back in a diagonal line. Head bowed between the arms, building strength and fortitude. As you exhale, gently land to your knees, uncurl your toes, separate your hands away from each other, and you're gonna come into the regular traditional child's pose where the arms wrap around you. Palms open at your feet. And the spine is ever so gently rounded like an egg shape. Now make sure that your shoulders are releasing and letting go. Falling over the knees like a raindrop over a smooth river stone.
Breathing into the back body. Remembering as you go within your own inner strength and perseverance, your own inner strength and fortitude. Now on your next in-breath, let's go ahead and slide the arms out in front of us. Lift your face up, look down the lane of your mat, hands shoulder distance apart, elbows lifted away from the ground. Rock up to hands and knees. Exhale, this time downward facing dog. Now downward facing dog may feel a lot better to you than that dolphin did. But we're so familiar with this pose that sometimes it's just easy for us to take the shape without really focusing on the strength factor. Now to bring the muscular engagement in, it requires focusing on the foundation. So spread out your fingers, root down through your knuckles and push the ground away from you with your hands. And notice how you may even slide back more as your arms fire up. And then do the same thing with your feet. Plug your feet down. And notice how it engages the muscles in the legs again. All right, when you're ready, let's go ahead and slowly travel the feet forward. Stepping one foot at a time, lifting the hands along the way. Till you come to the top of the mat and just double down, double over your legs. Now, I haven't really asked you to do much here, so you may just be hanging free the yin way. But we're going to activate more. Before you activate more, I just want you to get a visual. Just look at the tops of your feet. And notice the difference when you really spread the toes, push down through the four corners of the feet. Notice you may see some of the muscles and bones through your skin. Notice how your legs probably straightened out, your calves got firmer. And then draw that navel in slightly. From Uttanasana, spread your arms out. Come all the way up. Arms framing the face to Urdhva Hastasana. And keep rooting the feet. Keep the legs active. Feel the navel lifting to activate your midriff. Sail the arms up overhead. So when you're engaging properly, there's a blending of strength and stretch. All right, hands to the heart and lower the hands down. All right, we're gonna lace the fingers together. Then plug the knuckles right up underneath the chin. You can breathe into four or six. See what works best for you. We're going to slowly open the hands and elbows. At the same time, lifting the chin up. Again, inhaling to the count of four or six. And as you exhale, bring the arms more together, hands together, and then lower the chin back down. Okay, we're going to do that a couple more times. Inhale. Hands opening, elbows spreading, head tilting back, and then exhale, arms coming together, maybe not all the way, and chin returning back down. One more. All right, we're gonna inhale. Take the arms up overhead, lace them together to the temple, Jupiter, Kali, Muldra, it has different names. Shoulders firming up towards the ears. And as we exhale, curve to the right. 
Now here, we often think, oh, this is a great side bend. This is a good stretch, and it is. But this side supporting is actually strengthening some of the inner muscles. Now, if you land down heavier through your left foot and maybe swing the left hip out just a bit, you may start to connect to those muscles that are having to support the shape. Affirming strength and courage and fortitude, feel up my mind and body. Inhale, come back up. All right, exhale, just do a slight curve. Nothing too dramatic. Then feel the stretch. Now let's tap into the straight. Put a landing line down through your right leg. Make your right foot heavier. Maybe swing the hip out wider. And maintain an open breath. Affirming strength, courage, and fortitude fill up my mind and body. Inhale, come back up. When you come back up, exhale, take the hands wide and fold again, Uttanasana. Round your Uttanasana, inhale, slide your hands up the leg bone, lengthen out through the vertebrae. Exhale, close back into center. Inhale, we're gonna step to plank. And when you're in plank, I want you to think about pushing the floor away from you with your hands. Feel the extra engagement of your arms, your upper back. Keep your quads lifting in towards your thigh bones. Keep the head up, neck in line with the spine. Again, building strength and fortitude. All right, as you exhale, let's lower the left knee down and let's take the right leg off to the side and plant the foot. Inhale, we're gonna spin open to stargazer, right arm reaching skyward. And this is often, we take this pose, we're in it, we enjoy it, but we're gonna add in the strength factor. All right, that means Pushing the floor away from me with your left hand. Feel the extra engagement in that bottom arm. Do the same thing with your left shin. Push down through your left shin, ankle and foot. And then maybe dial the heart up towards the ceiling. And notice the difference here. And then exhale. Lower the right hand back down. Good, drop your right knee down. All right, well, let's explore tabletop a moment. Hips above knees, shoulders above wrists. And when you're ready, again, push the floor away from you like you did in plank. But now we're gonna push down through the shins, ankles, feet to firm up the belly. It's almost like you're about to go into cat stretch. You may feel tempted to go to cat stretch, but you're not rounding out. This is our strong tabletop. It is not a neutral pose. All right, inhale, let's extend the left leg to the side. And then just sweep the left, left arm out and up, right? What we typically do. And there's nothing wrong with this but we're gonna add in strength and fortitude. Spread the hand, root it down, line up the arm, activate more muscles. Push down through your right shin, ankle, foot, and maybe dial the heart a little bit more skyward. And breathe. All right, exhale, let's lower the left hand down as well as the left knee. And it's okay if you're not in a full tabletop because we're gonna do cat-cow from here. We did it with forearms earlier. Inhale, open to cow, feet to lasana. 
Exhale to cat, Mayurasana. And continue to flow, inhale, open heart. Exhale, withdraw and hide the heart away. All right, inhale, pause in cow tilts. And notice where the foundation may not be very strong. We're just kind of focused on bending the back. So put the emphasis again in the foundation. Notice what changes. And then exhale, take it to cat stretch. And again, we're usually focused on the round nature of the spine here, but let's focus on rooting the foundation, the hands, the shins, the feet, and notice how it gets a little bit more exaggerated, a little bit more expressive, and then slowly let that go and sink down to your forearms. Let's get off the rest. <laughs> All right, we're gonna lace up the hands again. And then rock the shoulders so they're lined up over the elbows. You're going to step one foot back and then the other. Forearm plank, but this one's easier, I promise. <laughs> it's easier than the first one we did. Something about linking the hands is really helpful. Okay, take one more breath here. And then slowly. Travel the feet forward, a baby step or two, as you lift and elevate your hips, coming back to dolphin. Strengthening the triceps, the deltoids. Three. And then exhale, land your knees. All right, we're going to stack on to the hands again, but we're shifting the left foot back, the right leg down the lane of the mat and coming into like a side plank, a modified side plank. And oftentimes we, again, just take the shape, but we're going to focus on pushing down that left hand as well as really powering down through that right foot. And when you really push down through the right foot, I want you to notice how it engages and lifts that inner part of your thigh. Good. Exhale, bring that hand down. Right knee down. We'll take it to the other side. Right shin back. Left foot down the lane of the mat. Opening up to this variation of side plank. And then pushing through the right hand and pressing down through the left foot. And notice what changes. Good, exhale, left hand down, right knee, left knee down. And we're gonna come on to the belly. So just kind of roll down. <laughs> You don't have to do the straight down unless you just want to. All right, the hands are going to slide underneath the shoulders. We're going to roll and loop the shoulders back and squeeze the elbows in towards our side ribs. The legs are going to shoot back. The feet are going to stay down. And we're going to just barely lift to like a baby cobra. Doesn't have to be anything very dramatic. On the exhale though, we're gonna bring the forehead down and we're gonna lift both legs and feet. Seesawing, inhale, press with the hands, lock the arms in, lift the face, lower the feet. And then exhale, come down to the face and elevate the feet. Just one more seesaw effect. And then lower the feet down, push up to table, 
And you're gonna circle the arms around you, returning to child's pose. Just let everything kind of loosen up here. Shoulders draping down and over the knees. I'm just gonna do a couple more active poses before we take restorative. So here, we're gonna stretch the arms out in front of us, lift the head up, extended child's pose, rock up to hands and knees. Exhale, downward facing dog. And so again, instead of just being in the V shape, put the work into the foundation and build up from there. Now walk your hands back towards your feet. And then again, noticing the tops of the feet. Notice the difference when you really plug them down, the difference, the engagement. And not just at the tops of the feet, but all the way up into your hips and glutes. Uttanasana, affirming here, nothing and no one on this earth can hold me down or back. I have an immense amount of strength and fortitude. All right, now, you're going to bend your knees if you need to. But you know how we walk the hands back towards the feet. This time, we're going to walk the hands forward. Sometimes we walk the feet forward like a walking meditation. We're doing the same thing here going from the heel of the hand to the arch of the hand down to the fingertips. And we're just slowly taking it out to plank. Only from plank, again, pushing the floor away from you with your hands, making sure the neck staying long in line with your spine. And then come down to the knees and roll to the belly. All right. Cross your left arm in front of you and roll to your left side. All right, and then notice if you have that tendency to flop down. So we're gonna put the pressure down through the left arm and hand. And notice when you do that, you naturally start to lift through the heart. Your head starts to lift away from the shoulder. Now you can stay right here. You don't feel like you have to do any more. But if you want to attempt crossing the right foot over, planting the foot, and then lifting the hip, you can try a forearm side plank. All right, so this is gentle. We're not staying up very long. That's what makes it harder. All right, flip to the belly. Cross your right forearm in front. Roll to your right side. And again, let's just focus on the arm because uh, the strength building we're working on is more in the upper body today. Press through the right forearm. Feel your chest pick up. Your head lift away from the bottom shoulder. You can stay here or cross the left foot over. Push down through the outer edge of that right foot to come to forearm side plank. Again, we don't have to stay at walls. This is gentle. We can come on down. And then we'll push up to table. All right. Restorative time. We're gonna take a slide. Now, I know I typically do the slide like this, tall and medium. You can also do medium and low, okay? So it just depends on how much of a recline you would like. And then we stack up the bolster. 
And then have a toss pillow or blanket in case you need additional support. We're going to sit closer to the holster so that when we lower, we're here with back support. You might need another blanket or pillow, perhaps, to go under your head. You may not. We're going to bend the left knee. And we're going to turn open from that hip. And this is where you can take it and stack it as thick or as thin as you need to underneath that left knee. And we're going to close our eyes and settle into this variation of reclined tree pose. I'm probably not alone in this, but as soon as I turned my eyelids down, I could feel all the work that we've been doing in the upper body. You may feel more heated in that area. Your muscles perhaps may feel slightly fatigued or awakened. They feel a little tingly. And then try to not get caught up in too much sensation. Now become more enraptured with your breath. I mentioned the breath was able to help me bring my fortitude back. This might be helpful for you. Control it for a few rounds and then let the control subside. That way you can stop and move towards a state of being versus doing.
it slowly lift to the left knee. Slide foot away. Bring the right foot closer and then fan open from the hip. Recline tree to the second side. And then of course, if you want to move that prop to stack thick or thin underneath the right side. Okay. Now that we've swapped sides, take a few deep rounds of yogic breath. Eventually letting it go. But you can drop within and seek and find your own inner strength and fortitude. Can't seek and find. Remember, ask, and it can be given to you.
Now we're going to slide the left foot in, open out from that hip, and maybe untuck the support. We're not going to stay here as long, I promise, but I just want you to hang out at the joints just for a little bit. Close your eyes. And take seven to 11 deep yogic breaths. We'll exit out of this pose. You may want to lift both knees and push down through your palms to lift your head and torso away. All right, for this next one, we're actually going to be on our backs. And uh, you may want the blanket under you. I'm cold, so I'm going to put the blanket over me. <laughs> but I want you to see this. We're going to turn the bolster up this direction. That way, the knees are bent deeper. I'm just going to cover my body. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna add in a little bit of shoulder work before Shavasana, okay? So lift the arms straight up. Hopefully you're not feeling that fatigue or heat anymore. You're gonna cross your right arm in front of your left, like an X. Then you're gonna drape and drizzle the fingertips down towards the ground. And you're going to give an extra little crossing here of the elbows. And now the elbows are facing up like the knees are. Your face is free. And it's not dropping into your chest. They're kind of hovering over the collarbones. And close your eyes. Seven to 11 deep breaths here.
inhale. Unwrap the arms, reach them up above, overhead towards the ceiling. As you exhale, cross the arms the opposite way, left arm in front. Let the fingertips drizzle down. You're not hugging yourself here. They're just kind of draping down. And then maybe cross the elbows a slight bit more, keeping your chest and face free. Some of you might even feel there's a pressure point, a trigger point here close to the shoulder blades that this can tend to target, which will be helpful after doing those strengthening exercises at the beginning. Seven to 11 deep yogic breaths here. And then eventually, let's just slowly unwrap the arms, lay them down beside us, and continue to take breaths. Asking you shall be given, seeking you shall find. Discover the inner strength and fortitude within.
practice. Begin to deepen the flow of our breath. And maybe take a foot up to the bolster to set it down and hug the knees in. And then we go. Really one twist in today. So if you want to roll the knees to the left, take a few breaths, rock them back through center and carry them over to the other side. And then you can roll to the right to come up. We close out the practice. Bring in the hands to prayer. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. We all be free and at peace from anything out of our control, anything imposed upon us by another, or any internal stressors of our own. May we remember your strength and fortitude. Namaste. Namaste.